doing well. Seventy-eight. Oh, he's, that's the way he's been. That's just that's just him. He's doing great. Good. Good evening, everybody. Today is Tuesday, June seventh. We're going to have a regular meeting um, at seven o'clock. And we're going to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance until we get started. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to honor a moment of silence honor the military, firefighters, road workers, and sheriff's deputies as they serve our community here in the job. Thank you. Ms. Edwards, we have roll call, please. Dustin McLaughlin. Present. Dustin McGuire. Present. Dustin McGuire. Present. Okay, next thing on the agenda is the physical office report. Tracy, you have the floor. gotten any applications in on the administrative assistant that's posted? No one has turned in any applications outside of the that we told you about. And none for the zoning, none for the administrative assistant. <coughs> Those are still existing. So when the administrator comes in, she could take that um, responsibility to hire the administrative assistant um, that will be helping her um, because nobody's responding. Okay. That's all I have. Um. I'd like to make a motion to accept the physical officer's report. I'll second. Roll call vote, please. Trustee McLaughlin? Yes. Trustee McGuire? Yes. Trustee McPath? Yes. Okay, so the next thing is old business. Uh, in the old, old, old business, we have an issue with the fireworks that we discussed, um, I believe it was the last meeting, it's been a couple weeks, so. But, um, so there's a uh, discussion on there's been a ban on fireworks. And then the governor, I believe, am I correct, Captain Flag, that didn't the governor say to shoot fireworks off in the state? Is that what he said? Yeah, on certain certain days. Um, oh, it is certain days. It's not. It's, it's not certain a, holidays. Yeah, it's certain holidays, and then uh, the days in conjunction with those yeah. holidays. 
or weekends before. It's, it's got several. It's got several days that it's blanketed to cover and things in conjunction with the holidays, but it's not a blanket all year long thing. Okay. So anyway, we uh, you know we were approached about a situation in one part of town and, and uh, about a fireworks issue and a lot of um, fireworks going off and um, and we we we've, uh, we've uh, talked about that. Um, we approached legal. And um, give us two cents. Uh, you've had some communication with them too, Jim. You got anything to add to that? I guess the big thing here is we need a good measurement in the whole community where the community falls with this. So I mean, if we could make it as simple as a foul issue. My biggest concern with this is it's easy for us to legislate it, but the burden of enforcing it yes. falls on two contracted cars. And something like 4th of July, there's a lot going on that night, and there's a lot of resources, and I just, we could pass a law, but number one, will the prosecutor's office back us up? On a, on a criminal case, which I think we already have some protections in place to cover that. But number two, do you want our two contracted cars chasing fireworks calls or DUIs on, on the big holidays? So to me, it's, uh, yeah, it was brought up all these other communities have it, but they also have their own police forces. So. The enforceability of something like this uh, puts a big burden on Captain Flag, and I just think it's unrealistic to expect a resolution to keep that in check. Well, I'd like to say this. <clears throat> is we have a ban now, and I haven't seen anybody, and maybe it's just because I haven't seen or heard of I've never heard of the police taking anybody to jail now. So what would be the difference between having a ban now and uh, uh, or having a ban later as opposed to having it now? I mean, there's no different. Uh, there's no difference to me. Um, and I can't see how if, if the sheriff are not concerned about taking the people up uh, people to jail or prosecuting them now, I don't see why now all of a sudden it's such a big issue that we either got to think about putting something on a ballot or that we're, I understand the need for discussion, but that's just kind of how I feel about that. Um, so we had a couple people that wanted to say something. Well, one of the things, right? But we're very uniquely positioned to be the only community that has a fireworks factory as a part of our businesses. They've been very supportive of our fire department over the years. And to me, it's a slap in the face to them. It's okay to buy them in Jefferson, but you can't shoot them off. So it's the same that band. needs to be. It's the same thing. <clears throat> It's not going to be a different kind of a ban later. A ban is a ban. We, we have so, prosecuted people for fireworks. That's, as in the discussion, we will always respond to issues of safety. Always. And we have charged people. We have confiscated fireworks in the past. What, I'm, what I tried to explain is that on holidays when fireworks are prevalent, you can look on a regional dispatch board throughout the county, and there are fireworks calls stacked. We are going to continue to be police for the most uh, serious, serious calls that are pending, so those will get prioritized. The calls about fireworks in the neighborhood that are left open-ended, that aren't providing a threat or creating a threat of uh, safety, that aren't uh, involving individuals of impairment 
we enforce. We always have. We will continue to. The law now, as it's written, provides us that option still. It's not a blanket to go out and shoot fireworks any way you want. You have to be sober. You have to be an adult, responsible party. You have to be doing it within safety guidelines. So when there are significant threats to that, to safety of individuals, we're going to respond, and if appropriate, we will cite people to court, just like we always have. Um, so that's the difference. The difference is that we have to weigh the priority level of the call when we take it. So if it's there and it's egregious, it will be dealt with. So. How many complaints have you had about fireworks in the last five years? You ask the wrong person. I don't know. Well, no. Yeah. You're elected officials, and you surely should have heard something. Sheila hears a lot because she brings it up about different things. But how many complaints have you had in the last five years? I think we're jumping at the bandwagon in the wrong way. Um, I could, I could even help Andy enforce the issue on oh, illegal, but I think we're going about it the wrong way. I think we're going about it the wrong way because if you had stamps to back you up, then, then you've got something to fall back on. But just because you got a few complaints, especially on one street, about every year a crowd of people going to town, I'd be willing to work with Andy on the issue and even working that night. But I think we're going about it the wrong way. If you, over the years, if you had a lot of complaints, a lot of fires, a lot of injuries, you got some back out. But right now, you don't. Just because one or two people don't like fireworks. <laughs> okay. uh, are you done? Yeah. Thank you, Chief Wright. Um, first, we have uh, she went first. She was okay. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Deborah Hardy, and I live at 1206 Liston Road, and I live in a residential area where you're house to house to house. You don't have that open space. I'm not against fireworks. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the danger. Where even though, how many of y'all have actually read the law that Governor DeWine signed? Have y'all actually read it? I think y'all need to read the legislation because, as Sheriff Flagg said, you're not supposed to be drunk and you're supposed to be sober and all this stuff. But do they do that? Do people actually do that? No. I've seen people doing fireworks shooting guns in the air. There's nothing in this legislation that said that when you have fireworks, you can shoot guns. But people do that. What I am concerned about is the danger that comes with these fireworks and being house to house to house. And you got hundreds of people in this area. People are on your property. I went to the extent to where I got a no trespassing sign put in my yard, no loitering, no soliciting just to protect me. But again, I'm dealing with hundreds of people, and that might be in another neighborhood. Do I go to them when they walk in my yard and disobey the sign and say, get out of my yard? And what if they tell me, no, put me off your yard? Then you got a confrontation. There's too much danger involved with these fireworks. Not only that, you got your property. What goes up must come down. 
They're right there on the corner where my property is. And it could be somebody else's. That don't even be on the corner. That goes up. A lot of it comes down. And I've seen it on my roof. How many of you are going to help get my roof repaired? I've had it on my roof. But again, damage, you pay for it yourself. That's why I'm insured for it. But again, I shouldn't have to go to my insurance people All right. and, and tell them I've got this damage because of a firework. And guess what happens? I still get penalized because my rate goes up. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be proactive. And again, I know there's some of y'all that might be against it. But let it happen in your yard. I don't think y'all would be happy if that happened in your yard. A hundreds of people, 50 people, even to the point where I've seen this. A lady took her car and blocked the street intersection from Liscom to Erickson. So no traffic could go up there so they could do fireworks. Is that not illegal? That requires a permit from the township. See? But again, I guarantee you she probably didn't have it. <coughs> but then you go out there and tell her to move, you run into the risk of confrontation. And the way people are now, and with the new law that's passing, what, next week, where you can conceal carry without a, a permit, mm -hmm. you're going to really encounter maybe possibility of problems. Mm -hmm. Because even though people know they're not supposed to carry, they do it now. And it's going to be more of a problem when the law passes next week. If they're carrying illegally, likely they're carrying illegally today, the new law just makes a provision for those that are capable of uh, passing those backgrounds. But you've had the bad people that... But we've always, had, we've always had those. But, and that's what I'm saying. There's going to be more of them that's going to even do it. So I'm basically saying there's a hazard to this. Fireworks has always been a hazard. And just because we have a building that sells them, you weren't supposed to set them off when people go buy them in Ohio anyway. But people been doing that. So to me, that's not an issue. And as far as putting it on the ballot, there's nothing in this legislation that says it has to go on the ballot before the people. It says the municipal, I think y'all should probably pull it and read it. It says each municipality can make a decision as far as banning them. You do not have to take it to the people to put it on the ballot. So I'm suggesting that y'all really read the law, which goes in effect July the 1st. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, you can name, no, it was name like, management, please. Like, uh, Glenn Thacker, I live on Bricker Avenue, 416, at the very end. And uh, the gentleman there was saying, how many calls have you had? Well, I've called, I know, twice, year before last, and an officer uh, flag was talking about, um, you know, the responsibility, um, you had to be sober, you had to be of age. What about 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning? when I'm trying to sleep. I'm as patriotic as the next guy. I'll tip, I'll, I'll say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, you know, I'll, you know, prayer, I'm all for that. But I like my sleep and my downtime. I'm an insomniac. When they're letting fireworks off at two or three o'clock in the morning, everybody's partying, and like the lady there just said, there's been a many a time where I've had to go out in my yard and clean up the bottle rockets. Just the other day, I had to go out and clean some bottle rockets out of my son's yard the other day. It is an issue, and uh, like I said, I have no problem with you doing it within limitations, but when you start doing it one, two, three o'clock in the morning, there's a certain cutoff time when you gotta say, hey, enough is enough. Cutoff time is at midnight. That's fine with me, you know. That's what cutoff time is. And I know the kids, they like to see the fireworks, and I'm, you know, I'm all for that, but there's, there's, there's a cutoff point, and, but, but, you know, you're gonna, you're just going to say, hey, okay, I'm going to say some fireworks, but you got to stop shooting them off at 12 o'clock. You think people are going to do that? Absolutely not. I've been there, I've done that. And you can check the records, Officer Flagg, see how many times Glenn Thacker's called the Sheriff's Department about fireworks. Well, I know he can check for me. I know he can check for me. Thank you. Linda, you're next. Linda Rally, 246 South Island. Now, it looks to me like we have an issue with different, you know, with, but in your situation, why can't 
cut the flag? Why can't you have a car sit there? If you know it's coming, wouldn't it be better off to head it off at the pass before hundreds of people got started and they got they got partying good before you went up there? You know, if you just put to kind of curb it before it started, because I mean, out where I live, you know, we enjoy you know if we have a cookout and have fireworks. We did what two years ago. You know, we enjoy that kind of stuff, and we have. We have animals, so I mean, it's not like you, know, you shoot things up and you have attention that you don't, you know, run the dogs and the goats and everything else off. But if you do it responsibly, you know, I I would hate to see you guys put a ban on fireworks so that we couldn't have them. But I understand your situation, but I think that the sheriff's department should work with you to stop it before it starts. But what you're looking at is a different area. Exactly. Because my dad is on Baby Farmersville Road. He's got six acres of land. We, we used to go out there, and you're right, the next house, six acres of land. You're not disturbing really your next neighbor because they're not on top of you. Right. But I'm really suggesting that if y'all have not been down Liscombe and Erickson, take a ride past there. So you can see that it's house to house to house. There is no space to where what you're doing would be appropriate. It just don't exist. I've got a fence and my neighbor's right next to it. So we don't have that luxury like you do. Because we're in the residential part, you're in probably the country part. So that makes a difference. It does, and that's what they need to assess. You know, I would hate to see them do a township-wide ban where our family can't gather and do it safely. Are you setting them up now, though? You already set them off because you said you did We did a couple years ago. But you've done it before, right? Yeah, we've done it. Okay. So so you despite the ban, you still set them off. Of course right? we did. And you did it reasonably, right? Of course we did. I mean, okay. you know, and they didn't come and visit us or nothing. I mean, you right. know, and it was nothing elaborate. You can't right. really have any complaints either. No, we didn't. Right, because you're you're uh, a uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. Russell Bax seventeen hundred dollars. Um you know as far as parameters of fireworks, it's like they have bottle rockets, they have, you know, black cats, there's little snaps, but, you know, what I see a lot is, is these big percussion, like borderline bombs. You know, when you're talking about a residential area, you're talking about, you know, fireworks that crack windows, um, Shake you foundation. Know, after the 4th of July, I, I pick up bottle rockets. I get up on my roof. I always got bottle rockets on the roof. Uh, I've seen, I've even, I've even had it happen to me where you set off a firework and, and it goes awry and shoots out the side. And you're talking about damage to vehicles. You know, I'm just a little uh, amazed, Chief, right, that you, you uh, wanted to get involved in the politics of all this, you know, in regards to public safety, you know, you're talking That's about... That's part of a job, sir. Yeah, okay, well, hear me out, you know, as far as, uh, you know, uh, say it's drought season and uh, they're letting off fireworks, you know, you're going to have to deal with the house possibly catching on fire, uh, people, people burning themselves or other people getting injured, you know, seems to me that, that you, sh you should be more focused on the public safety and then getting involved in the politics and calling people out being so pro firework you know uh, you know as far as the parameters of the fireworks yeah yeah you got fireworks where people are out having a good time and, and let them off responsibly then you got these bombs that are capable of, of igniting a house and, and minutes flat so you know I just think it opens the door to uh, you know, major problems. And, but, you know, the, the, the township is so diverse, you got a lot of rural area where it's safe to let off just about any kind of firework. And uh, it's over in the flat, but like the lady said, there's, the houses are so close together that, you know, it wouldn't be nothing for somebody to set off a firework and to shoot through somebody's window. And, it, you know, they may have kids or anything in there. Next thing you know, the house is on fire. So, you know, I just think there's a lot more to look at other than, you know, simple fireworks. But that's all I have to say.
Okay, so thank step, you. Step one would be to quantify. I mean, you can pull your call reports, fireworks related. You can pull your run reports. Give us, I mean, this, this is the first time since I've been trustee we've had anybody come and testify in a meeting bringing up the fireworks issue. So, you know, the more that we promote it, the more that the community is aware. We're getting, it'll give us feedback to do the right thing instead of passing legislation telling everybody how to live, but then not being able to, to enforce it again. You're going to call the police after you hear something. So then it's their job to find who shot off the big, the big bomb type things. And like the grand finale of the fireworks, those kind of things. So, uh, give a little bit of data and then we can make an educated decision on, on what to do. Can I say one more thing? I don't want to be out of line, but I, I, I just think some people are not seeing the seriousness of the danger. And as the gentleman said, safety should be number one priority for every resident that live in the township. The reason why nothing has been addressed at any of the meetings is because for the last four years, I've been calling the sheriff's office. And I'm thinking, okay, they'll deal with it. They'll deal with it. Well, nothing ever really got done. Last year, Sheriff Flagg did send out one of his patrol persons. Was the worst thing that could have ever happened because she came out, she talked to the people, and I didn't go up to the patrol, so I really didn't hear the conversation. But it must have went something like this. Y'all just be careful what you're doing. Just be responsible. And she drove off. Never saw the patrol car again. These people are so bad that they are actually in the street. If the patrol person would have came back around later on, she wouldn't have been able to get her cruiser through the street. Because you've got fireworks at the fireworks. <laughs> Cars have to stop. This is literally in the street. And this is the busy street. They have to stop until the fireworks stops doing whatever it's doing. <clears throat> now, y'all think that's not a hazard? I guess I must have a definition of what safety is. Because that's a hazard, just like you said, somebody's car. If I'm seeing it, if I see it down here and it hasn't been lit yet, and I drive by, what if I drive over and then all of a sudden it starts spitting out the sparks and stuff? It's possibly blowing up my car. There's too much danger, too much danger that is involved with these fireworks. And I wish y'all could see the danger in it. Uh, and again, I'm not against none of that because I love to see fireworks go off, but people who know what they are doing. I go to them shows all the time because they know what they're doing. But these people around here in the neighborhood, they are not licensed to do that. I guarantee you they haven't had any training on how to do that. And I've had some. My grandson and I sitting in the yard and one missed miss fire and came straight at me and my grandson. And I had to pull him and run out the way. There's too much danger involved. Too much danger. And I'm trying to be proactive because it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. He won't be responding to fireworks. He may be responding to somebody got hurt. It's, it's, just too, it's, it's just too much of a danger. They are not anything to play with with people who are not experienced with them. And he's right. The big bomb 80s, there's one of them that they have that's on like a string, and they throw it in the street, and it shakes my whole house. And not only that, it's messing up the streets, the roads. I'm surprised y'all didn't even see that. And I've had to call, they don't clean up the debris. I've had to call and tell and say, hey, who's cleaning up this debris that's left out here? Pull y'all's report. I called last year. And when I got home from work, somebody from the township cleaned it up. I wasn't going to. It's too much danger involved in these fireworks. It's too much danger. 
Thank you. You're I do want to say before we move on is that Captain that, that Flash did send me uh, um, uh, three calls from last year, but um, also it was reported that during the July 1st of 2021 through July 21st of 2021, um, they received 16 calls related to fireworks. So 16 calls from 1 to 21st. So that's what, 20 days? That's gentlemen. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, right, my name is Alex Smith. I live at 329 Major Avenue. But Cameron County is supposed to put three stop signs we thought he was going to put there. We only have one. It's right by one that you tell him was a fire department. He lives in the fire department. He lives right there on the corner. They come around the corner and they fly through there all the time. So the police can't be there all the time. They hit my fence, tore my fence down. They went into Mr. Sackett's uh, yard. They went over to other people's yard. Now they get threatened up. A lot of them putting tree, uh, trees and stuff like that, big trees on their, around the property. They don't want, they want that to come through their yard. Is Maynard where the... And this is an ongoing thing, you know, uh, them flying through there. One of the kids going to get hit out there. You got kids out there playing. I told the police one day, you go up to the road. You, can, uh, you got a problem on the both sides of the road. You can park on both sides of the street. A lot of the parks in the street you got uh, a big RV parked out there. A lot of times they parked out in the street. I told the police officer, he said, Y'all want you guys to go to, to the media and, and say something. We need some kind of a, some kind of a sign. You got a lot of park right there by the the street because you've got uh, potholes and everything and trying to avoid people coming up and down the road and a lot of people have swerved uh, missing potholes. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> I do want to say that the road department has been out uh, patching holes. Yeah. So I uh, trustee Mc McLaughlin is over the road department and we have the road well, the department. Well, the department was last year, they didn't go to come and see them. They were going to fix uh, some of them, fix those piles, and none of them had fixed them. Yeah. Over where? Mater. Oh, Mater. Oh, Mater. Mater, you've been working in that area. It's going to take, it's going to take some time, sir. I mean, we're three guys in the daytime and two guys at night. We're making our way through. Well, what's the year? Is it, is it other people? Last year, the young guys said they didn't want to fix the road. Oh, okay. Well, so, we're, we're working you know, that way. I, I just didn't want to. Okay. We're, yeah. work, we're working that way. Yeah. Now, is Mater where the, the um, RTA bus turned around? Is that yeah. it? No. That's not that. Okay, because this is not a stop sign there either. Uh, Mater's up in the uh, Brick or Platte in Radcliffe. Okay. That's oh, where I live. Uh, by 